Hi, this is Daniel, and you're watching Unrivaled Investing. This is a no-hype, mission-focused channel trying to find you exceptional companies and unrivaled investments. I'm looking for potential multi-baggers, folks, types of stocks that could potentially go up hundreds or even thousands of percent over time. And that's the reason why I love doing bargain hunting. I love looking for stocks, companies that are growing at good clips, and then they sell off dramatically. And that's the reason why today we're looking at Fiverr, FVRR stock. They are a special company. We'll talk about their value proposition in just a little bit, but we'll also talk about, so not only what do they do, what does Fiverr do, FVRR stock, but we're also going to talk why did they sell off about 30% in just the last week? What's going on there? How should you think about this from a high-level perspective? And then what do you think this stock could do going forward? Should Fiverr be part of your investment journey as we look ahead? Should it be part of my investment journey? If you want to follow my personal investment journey, go to unrivaledinvesting.com. Now let's dive into sort of what's been going on with Fiverr stock, where recently it gapped down about 25% after they reported their second quarter results, um, second quarter calendar period. And so that's that's a significant drop where you see it it went from, you know, literally the week prior, you know, trading close nearly to $300 a share, 260 bucks a share. Now it's closer to 170. And so before we dive into what exactly drove that drop, let's drop, let's do a quick understanding overview for the, you know, for the viewers that's never talked or understood or looked into Fiverr, what is it that they do? And then importantly, we'll discuss why valuation is critical driver to future returns and every investor needs to understand their valuation when they own something. And so to do a quick overview of Fiverr, the way to understand is they are a global online marketplace that connects freelancers and businesses with digital services. So I personally love marketplace economics. And the reason why is that you get these beautiful flywheel effects where you get more and more buyers that show up to the marketplace that results in better supply. And the more supply you get, the more buyers you get because it creates, you know, more opportunities and better, more, more and more buyers show up because, hey, there's more and more demand for it. And so you do get this beautiful aspect where, where more and more freelancers say, hey, there's, there's opportunities for better earnings and there's, there's more opportunities to do work. And therefore, there's going to be more and more freelancers that show up. And then the more quality freelancers show up, the more demand that you're going to get from potential businesses, potential users saying, hey, I need this one-off thing. I need to make a video. I need to, uh, you know, copy work. I need something done. And the reason why these types of business models are so special is that generally you can't have you know, like dozens and dozens of marketplace business models. You're only going to have a couple that work. And so, you know, at most a few online platforms win. Maybe you get some very niche platforms over time. But right now, for freelance work, Fiverr and Upwork are really the key main players. Fiverr is growing significantly faster than Upwork. Upwork is slightly bigger than them. But I like to see what's going on with Fiverr. I like to see that they're growing faster than their competitors. And so these two, I would say, up between Upwork and Fiverr, these two are the key platforms that are tapping into this, this dynamic of online marketplace for freelancers, connecting freelancers with potential jobs. And so you see the number of buyers going onto the platform over time saying, hey, this is worthwhile. Two million buyers, now four million buyers in just the last couple of years. And you can see the spend per buyer is also going up, effectively saying, hey, there's these one-off projects that I wanna get done that you know maybe it's a $200 project on average to maybe maybe it's to review you know some advertisement something so there's all these one off projects maybe it's a voiceover for something and so it's all these little niche markets that can be addressed by freelancers and in all honesty that does address the current modern day economy of hey I don't necessarily want to be tied down to a job I like this freelancing I like this remote working and so this does sort of fit at least with what you're seeing with the buyers as well is that not only are there more buyers but they're also spending more on this meaning they're pleased with getting these freelance services and freelancing keep in mind could be a good way to start something that becomes a permanent role you could have say you know hey I want you to do this one off project and maybe you could come on full time later on so this is you know it's it's two aspects to this uh, and so this is naturally translated into Fiverr just being a growth monster. You can see how their revenue on a quarterly basis has tripled just in the last few quarters from 26 million to 75 million. In the most recent quarter, 60% growth year over year. That's significantly more than Upwork, which is in the 40% range. And you can see how their growth rate really picked up 
benefited from COVID, more people staying at home, doing these one-off projects. And, uh, you know, their growth rate previously was closer to 40, 50% a year. You can see how that was how it played out between 2018, 2019, going from 76 million in revenue in 2018 to 107 million in 2019. Then you did have this growth reacceleration to 77% benefited from COVID. So really strong revenue growth, but either way, 40 to 50% growth, that's still something that's that's still suggesting you're tapping into something special here. And the reality is they are when they call out, look, the majority of freelancing still happens offline. They're just barely tapping into this between them, Upwork. And so you're talking about a multi-year, multi-decade opportunity when you look at this. And so why did it drop? And that was the, what I wanted to focus on with this video, not only their business model, but also what, what drove a 30% haircut in about a week. And then after we talk about why did it drop, we'll talk about the current valuation you know, and as a follow up. So the real reason why it, it, it fell was because of their second quarter, you know, update, where they, they provided a financial outlook, their fiscal 21 guidance was revised lower. And so they talk about how our third quarter 21 outlook and updated full year 2021 guidance reflects the new post COVID effect we saw in recent weeks. As COVID restrictions are lifted in many parts of the world, people are spending more time out of home and less time on screens. The reduced online activity translates into more modest new customer cohorts and less activity for older cohorts, i.e. less new customers and the activity of prior customers aren't doing as much. And so they are still expecting very strong figures, still expecting nearly 300 million in revenue and nearly 50% growth. But keep in mind, their previous outlook was 59 to 63% growth. So that is a big haircut. And the part that you really need to understand, this is where you'll see dramatic changes in valuation is what's implied by the future growth. And Future growth is really what drives future multiples, and that's what drives a lot of your return. And so their first half 21 growth is around 76%. So by saying, hey, we're expecting 50% growth for the full year, despite the fact that they're growing 76% in the first half, they're either sandbagging their numbers, which is very possible, or it implies that their growth in the second half 2021 is closer to 30%. So this, this lower growth would warrant a lower multiple. And that's what happens with Wall Street. That's what happens why these stock prices fluctuate so much. And it is worth calling out. It is worth understanding. And this is, this is, in my opinion, really critical, especially where we are in the market cycle, where you're getting a lot of people, rah, rah, stocks are amazing, stocks only go up. That sort of attitude where people say, hey, valuation doesn't matter. And I, I can't, you know, I, I can't disagree more with, with that one statement because when you look at something like Fiverr, F-E-R-R, -R, you look at where it traded back in 2019 after it IPO'd, even, even early 2020, before people really started realizing COVID, it was trading in a high single digit, low teens price to sales multiple. And then because of COVID, I would argue, because more folks got more excited about this business model because more folks got excited about stocks in general. You saw a dramatic valuation expansion going f effectively from a range of, let's say, six to 11 times sales to mid 40s. And that's where it was recently. Now it's around, you know, 26 to 30 times. And you have to ask yourself, are the current prospects really 3x better than they previously were? That's the thing you should be thinking about because this this valuation expansion is really what drove most of the return since 2020. Yeah, the business did grow nicely 100%, but you do need to understand, wait a second. Yeah, the reason why the stock was supercharged and went up more than 100% during this time period is because the valuation expanded by 3x. And so you should be asking yourself, wait a second, if this business was growing 40 to 50% a year and was previously valued, let's say, around 10 times sales, give a little, take a little, then why should it be worth that much more now, especially because you're probably gonna be coming off of a COVID high where, where COVID was growing, you know, accelerated that growth. And that's effectively what they're saying. They're saying, hey, our outlook for the second half of this year is closer to 30%, lower than the growth that they had during this period. So one could argue that their future growth rates could actually be lower, hence a valuation multiple closer to this range might be applicable. That's something for investors to consider. And you see this with a lot of companies where you have a dramatic valuation reset 
in response to the dramatic monetary easing that happened in response to COVID. In a more normal environment, you could easily see valuations reset back to where they previously were. And just as a quick snapshot, and this is another re-emphasizing how important understanding valuation is, is I, I did this sort of back of the envelope valuation, this hypothetical valuation range I made before, before the drop. And this was back when, let's say it was around 260 bucks a share. Other folks are saying, hey, great company, rah, rah, valuation doesn't matter. And I'm saying, wait a second, even if you include fantastic, even if you, you give full credit to their outlook and you give full credit to margins that they, they, they don't have currently, maybe in the future they have. And keep in mind, this is a special business. This is a marketplace business that's clearly taking share, growing over time, you know, juicy, fat margins, around 80% gross margins. Yeah, longer term, you can see super fat profit margins. You know, here it is, I'm penciling out 35 to 45%. Nothing I've seen says that can't happen. You know, that that won't happen. Nothing in the recent data suggests that. But what the recent data is saying the growth rate could be lower. And so here it is, this is before, you know, incorporating the recent growth. This would argue, I'd argue the rosy figures back when it was trading around 260 bucks a share, penciling out, let's say 30 to 40% annualized growth in the years ahead, which is around what it was previously doing. In 2019, it grew 42%. So an annualized growth rate, 30 to 40%, 50 to 60% growth in 2020, assuming an end multiple of let's say 20 to 40 times. So that gets to an ending valuation price of sales multiple of let's say five to 14 times about. That resulted in not really a compelling valuation at 260 bucks a share. That's effectively a coin toss of what it could do over five years. Yeah, strong, fast growing company, but still valuation matters. And if you overpay for a quality business, you could still be sitting on dead money for five years. And honestly, that's just a long time, in my opinion, to be sitting on a great company where it's like, eh, it's not really going anywhere. So then at, you should ask, well, wait a second. So what's the valuation now? And here it is. I'm going to do a quick plug for those that are tuning in for the first time. My name is Daniel. You're watching Unrivaled Investing. If you enjoy learning about potential multi-baggers, please make a point of subscribing. Hit that thumbs up button. If you want to follow my personal journey as I look for potential multi-baggers, go to unrivaledinvesting.com. First week of the month, I call out my full portfolio. By the end of the month, I call out a potential multi-bagger. And we also have a community, an exclusive community on Discord where I'm interacting with the Unrivaled Nation on a daily basis. You know, dedicated channels following individual stocks. So let's dive right into what, what I think Fiverr could look at in terms of prospective returns right now based on around $170 share price. So looking at around $6.2 billion market cap, honestly, I'm looking at this and I've updated the implied growth. I've updated the future implied growth, what it could look like in the years ahead. And I'm just not, you know, I'm not crazy sold on it as I look at it. You know, I'm effectively giving it a little bit more than management credit, you know, effectively saying management says 50%, okay, 50% will be my low side in this hypothetical framework. And of course, could it go higher or lower? Of course it could. But the main takeaway as I update this is even though it's sold off, the valuation isn't crazy compelling. It's about downside based on what I'm looking at of like 35% upside of about 100%. And that's based on the range of N multiples five years from now effectively saying 22 times to let's say 38 times sales. So in order for this thesis to really work, you have to think that valuations will stay the same, maybe go up. I don't, I don't really see the, that case from here. Um, so you really have to say, okay, this business is going to grow. The underlying fundamentals will grow at a really high rate and the valuation might come down, but it won't fully offset that. And that's the part that makes me uneasy is I see, whoa, this valuation's up 3X from where it was, 3X plus, depending on how you're looking at it, that could offset a lot of the growth in the years ahead. So really, in order to be a mega bull on Fiverr right now, I think you have to say, hey, valuation will not compress that much and they're still gonna grow at a great clip. That could happen, in which case you're gonna get a high scenario that's even higher than what I'm looking at because currently it's a 20, you know, 26 to 30 times price of sales. I'm saying five years from now, let's get back to more normal environment. Let's get back to like a 13 times price to sales multiple, which would be an implied by a 38 times multiple, assuming 45% optimized margins. So that's how I'm looking at this. I'm not crazy sold on the risk reward as I look at this. If this video has been helpful for you to understand Fiverr's business model, a quick take, as well as why did it drop, what its potential risk reward looks like in the years ahead, please make a point of subscribing and hitting that thumbs up button. Thanks so much for watching.